Hello, welcome to this video. Um, today what we're looking at is source analysis. We're doing this specifically for year nine. So if you're interested in GCSE source analysis, this probably isn't the video for you, but do keep an eye out because I will have something coming soon. If we're talking about sources, then it's worth being clear on exactly what it is we mean by the term. When we think about sources, we might think about primary sources, things like letters, photographs, or ruins. We might also think about secondary sources, such as books that have been written years later, or newspaper articles. In many ways, sources are like traces in the sand. They're physical markers of things that have gone before. Examples of where somebody has chosen to take a picture, put pen to paper, or build something. These are the remnants, the remains. To the historian, though, they're far more than this. To historians, sources and the facts and understanding we can draw from them can be building blocks, the very pieces that we use to understand and answer questions about the past. That makes the historian then a builder, and through asking inquiries and finding pieces of information that can answer them, we are building and creating our idea of what it is that has gone before. This is E.H. Carr. And anybody who has studied history at university will have probably been made to read one of his books. The most famous of which is called What is History? And he talks about sources and the facts that we can get from them like this. He gives the example of facts being like fish. But he says something really interesting. He says that what the historian catches, so the piece of information that we find, will depend not only on chance, but also where they are looking and what he chooses to use to find them. When answering an inquiry then, the types of sources we use are incredibly important. But it's not just the sources we use, it's what we do with them. Carr says that history means interpretation. It's understanding these sources and trying to draw out what is important. So then, let's go fishing. When we're fishing for sources, the most important thing to do is to start with our question. As part of this assessment, what you'll be asked to do is come up with your own inquiry questions. And this must be the starting point for every single source we look at. Say your question is this. What were the long-term health effects of working in mills? The place to start when finding your sources is ensuring that they're going to help you to answer the question. Take these four sources as an example then. You might have an interview with a doctor who used to work with mill patients over a prolonged period of time. You might have the memoir of somebody who used to work in mills. You could also have an account of the types of punishments that they suffered. And you might also have the accidents that occurred over a set period of time. When we're trying to decide what's going to be useful, we need to think strongly about what our question is. In this situation, two of these sources aren't going to be helpful for us. One definitely won't. The accounts of punishments suffered. That's not going to help us to answer the question. And the other one, accidents in the mills, well, this might tell us what happened to them, but does it tell us the long-term health effects? Not really, maybe not as much as the other two. An interview with a doctor will be able to give us a medical opinion, a view on what went wrong, especially if it's over a prolonged period of time. Likewise, the memoir of somebody, the, um, the ideas and the thoughts of somebody who used to work there will have an experience from a perspective and a place in time where they understand the changes that have gone on and may be able to compare their own experiences alongside those who worked with them at the time. For each of our inquiry questions then, it's vital that we pick sources which are going to help us to answer the question. Not all of the sources will be useful for all types of question, but whenever you're deciding what sources to use, always bring it back and make sure that they can help you with the question. When you've decided on your sources then, the next step is to interrogate them, to ask certain questions of them to get all of the useful information you can. We're going to call this interrogating the source. The first question we're going to ask them is what can be inferred? What can we learn from the source about the question we've given ourselves? The next question we're going to ask is what is it exactly that supports this? What piece of evidence or quotes from within the source itself can back up what we have inferred? The third question is a really important one. This is how useful 
is the source. Is there anything else within the content of the source that can help us in answering our question? It might be who it's from, or it might be what exactly is said regarding the details. The final question we want to ask is how reliable the source is. Do we think it's reliable and why? Again, this will be linked to who has said it, what agenda they might have, what the origin is, and what we think the purpose might be. Let's have a look at how this is going to work in practice then. We've kept the same question we were looking at before, what were the long-term health effects of working in mills? And I've picked this source, a source from an interview with William Blizzard, someone who's a lecturer and surgeon, and he's been interviewed for a parliamentary committee. The first thing that we need to look at then is inference. What can we take from the source and what can we learn about our question? I would say that this source tells us this. It states that permanent injuries are suffered by the workers and that this is particularly true of girls. The source tells us that this can result in lasting damage to their bones and finally details some of the problems that can occur during childbirth. What we've done is we've read the source and pulled out the key elements from the source that can tell us something about our question. The next aspect we want to look at is what exactly there is in our source that supports this information. From our source then, we can draw out specific quotes or passages which support what we've just inferred. The first one of these might be then that girls are particularly at risk. This is a quote taken directly from the source that supports our inference. The source also says that it creates what is called distortion. This is referring to the problems that are being suffered. Finally, we can take this from the source that will most likely produce deadly consequences. Again, this is a direct quote and it's something from which we have drawn our inference. The next aspect then is how useful this is. Again, with usefulness, we are looking at the source itself. I've put that this source is useful because it gives an account of the nature of the problem, as well as the consequence of it during childbirth. We are describing what the source says, and we are stating how it refers to our question. In this case then, because the source is from a medical perspective and is detailed in specific in what the issues are, I would say this is a useful source for our inquiry. The final question we will look at in our table is how reliable the source is. For this, we're not necessarily looking at what the source says, but we're looking at the provenance, the bit at the top of the source. When we're doing this, we want to think about three things. The nature of the source, so what exactly it is. In this case, this is an extract from an interview. The origin, so where it comes from. And we also want to think about the purpose. What is it that this source is trying to do? For reliability then, I've put that the source is reliable because it's from an experienced medical professional. We can see this at the top of the source. It says that it's an interview from William Blizzard, who works as a lecturer and surgeon at the Royal College of Surgeons. We also know that it's part of an interview with a parliamentary committee. This again is information that we have in our source itself. As part of the interview for the parliamentary committee then, he would have been asked to come in order to submit unbiased evidence. Taking these together, we can assume that this source is reliable. By answering these four questions then, we start to uncover what it is this source can show us. We start to find those building blocks that we can use to create an answer to our own inquiry question. As part of this assessment, what you're doing is finding three inquiry questions, each of which you will do two source analyses for. That means doing this in the same level of detail six times in total and filling in the tables that you've been given. If you're unsure about any aspect of this analysis or what you're expected to do, my advice would be to re-watch the section on the video and use the examples that I've given you. There is extra advice and support on the sheets you've been given, but I hope you enjoy this task. Thank you for watching.